In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. A violent crime spree with a mother killed her four-year-old shot in gunfire at a Waffle House. The man now charged recently out on parole. Plus, the president in Metro Atlanta appealing to voters who may not traditionally vote for him. Say her name. Brianna Taylor's family talking to reporters for the first time since a grand jury's decision not to charge three officers directly involved with her death. Her mother's plea for justice is coming up. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. President Trump on this Friday making a stop in Metro Atlanta as the candidates prepare for the home stretch of the upcoming election. We are closing in on November. We certainly are. The president promising new jobs and new capital business while trying to sway Georgia's black voters who have historically voted Democratic. 11 Live's Doug Richards has more. President Donald J. Trump, take us back to the top. The president's rally started with African-American supporters from Georgia and around the country. He talks about opportunity zones. We need that. Talking up how they've mostly prospered over the last three plus years. As a small business owner, I, you know, I've just seen opportunity after opportunity under this president. So we're, we're ready to reelect him. Linda Vega is a McDonough business owner already sold on Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Now the president much. wants to bring more African-American voters into the Trump tent with an appeal to build jobs and economic opportunities and turn away from Democrats. And they have taken the black voter for granted. And it's not fair, it's not right, and it's not going to happen because we're going to have such a victory like you've never had before. Trump's campaign is promising more capital for black-owned businesses and more jobs for black families. The president also touched on protests that rekindled this week, suggesting they are driving black voters into his camp. Many of those who are spreading violence in our cities are supporters of an organization called Black Lives Matter, or BLM. It's really, it's really hurting the black community. African Americans, black Americans, and black communities want police. They want, as a matter of fact, a lot of cases they want more. They don't want to defund it. Vice President Mike Pence also expected to travel to Cobb County next week. He is scheduled to speak at a faith conference on Wednesday. Meanwhile, ahead of the president's visit today, several black Georgia Democratic leaders addressed some of the ways they believe the president has failed black America. With COVID as a pre-existing condition and the Affordable Care Act torn to shreds, black Georgians who have been disproportionately exposed to the virus will be left out in the cold. We can't let that happen. And black Georgians won't let this crisis get worse. We'll do absolutely everything we can to make sure that we elect Democrats up and down the ballot to stop the Republican assaults 
on our rights and protect our democracy. Four years ago, as you recall, Donald Trump said to us, what do you got to lose by voting for me? Well, I'll tell you what we've lost. We lost jobs. We've lost lives. And we've lost faith in an administration that has failed us. Coming up in prime time, we are talking to Emory political science professor, Dr. Andre Gillespie, about a new poll showing a gender divide in Georgia for the presidential race. So we are 39 days out from the election. 11 Alive is bringing you coverage every day on the big issues. We want to hear from you. Our political team is dedicated to sharing the candidate's stances and offering context, perspective, and analysis on the races that impact you and, and the community from health care to economy. There's so many here in 2020. Where to begin? If you've got a story that you want our political team to look into, all you have to do is email us at where ATL speaks at 11alive.com. A search underway right now for a missing infant. South Fulton police say Angela White took off with her three week old daughter Israel. She's supposed to be under DFCS care. They are concerned that the child might be in danger. So if you have seen her or the child, you see them there on your screen, you're asked to contact 911. Happening right now, protesters continue calling for Georgia to stop allowing no knock warrants. They started with a rally outside the Atlanta police headquarters before marching towards the state house. 11 Alive's Brendan Keith live there with the group. Brendan. And Jennifer, that march has now returned to the Atlanta Police Department here to APD. Uh, we counted about 240 people uh, that were in front of the state capitol and uh, you know, very loud speeches, but also very peaceful. Uh, really no clashes with police at all because police were in a standoff distance. Right now, uh, the official demonstration is over. In fact, they announced that. The organizers said, we're done, it's over. If you want to stick around, you're on your own. And now we've got about 50 to 60 people who have stayed behind here at Atlanta Police Headquarters. What they're protesting is no-knock warrants, uh, where a search warrant can be served without the uh, police having to say, hey, we're here first. And so that's what the protest is about, and that's what the folks are here uh, protesting now. Now, there's some speeches and uh, people still demonstrating at this point, uh, but they're not separate, for, or separate from, the, uh, from the original uh, protest. So uh, it's about Black Lives Matter. It's about no-knock warrants. Uh, and it's also about the young black men who have been killed by Atlanta police. Several mothers of young black men were actually speaking to the crowd and uh, calling for justice, not just for their sons, but for all black men who have been killed by police. That's the story here at Atlanta Police Headquarters. All right, Brendan Keefe, downtown Atlanta. Brendan, thank you. Family of Breonna Taylor now speaking for the first time with reporters after a Kentucky grand jury and attorney general decided not to directly charge three police officers in connection with her death. Taylor's mother was too emotional to speak, so Brianna's aunt did the speaking instead. I knew Cameron would never do his job, but what I do know is that him and countless others will go to bed sleeping with Brianna's face, still hearing her say her name. Right. Cameron alone didn't fail her but it ended with a lack of investigation failed her. The officer who told a lie to obtain a search warrant failed her. The judge who signed the search warrant failed her. The terrorist who broke down her door failed her. The system as a whole has failed her. The family's attorneys again calling for the recordings and the transcripts from the grand jury proceeding to be released, asking if anyone gave voice to Breonna Taylor. Protests have continued in that city for more than 100 days, growing in intensity since Wednesday's announcement. Let's get you caught up on some other big headlines from today. The leader of a group called Black Lives Matter of Greater Atlanta was arrested by the GBI today on fraud charges. Agents raided a home in Toledo, Ohio and arrested Sir Major Page, whose real name is Tyree Conyers Page. He's accused of using more than $200,000 in donations from the Black Lives, of, uh, Black Lives Matter of Greater Atlanta social media page to pay for personal items. That includes food, entertainment, furniture, and tailored suits. The GBI says he told people asking about the money that it would be going to causes related to social justice and the George Floyd case. 
So Major Page's organization is not affiliated with Black Lives Matter of Atlanta, despite having a similar name. Well, you now have more time to complete your 2020 census. A federal judge extended the deadline through the end of October. The decision comes after civil rights groups and local governments sued the census, arguing a shortened timeline would undercount minorities. Remember, you can complete the census online by mail, in person, or by calling the census hotline, and we have that number available for you on 11alive.com. 59 cats safely rescued from a Sandy Springs condo. Oh this is a, a tough story. Lifeline's yeah. Fulton County Animal Services found the cats and kittens living in what they call unsanitary conditions. But here's the other part of the story. Another 15 deceased cats were found inside the home's freezer. The owner of the home has not been charged at this point. Police are waiting to see if necropsy reports can be done on the cats. If they show foul play, the Sandy Springs Police Department will take over the investigation. Well, wow, that's a lot of animals. My goodness. Yeah. Healthcare workers are determined to help those diagnosed with COVID, even if it means making personal sacrifices. Next, a look beyond the front lines. Well, all that moisture from what was Tropical Storm Beta is out of here now, and a little drier air is trying to filter in. But despite that, a few little pesky showers hitting the ground. So coming up, what this means for the rest of your Friday and how this weekend is going to shape up. And we want to hear from you. We are streaming right now in our 11 Alive YouTube page, and that is the same place where you can subscribe and join the conversation in our community section. There's more 11 Alive news in prime time after this break. Their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be. A man recently released on parole now charged in a violent crime spree where a mother was killed, a child shot, and gunfire erupted at a Waffle House. 11 Alive's Latasha Gibbons is looking into the suspect's past. The Clayton County Sheriff's Office shared this photo showing the moments Carl Jordan was arrested. Jordan is accused of going on a crime spree that started Wednesday night at a home on Glen Court in Hampton, Georgia. Police say Jordan shot and killed his ex-girlfriend, then shot her four-year-old and her mother. The child's grandmother tried to escape and get both of them to safety. The grandmother and the four-year-old are expected to be okay. Ten hours later, detectives say Jordan showed up at a Waffle House near McDonough, where he allegedly tried to rob the business and shot yet another woman before fleeing. That victim is recovering. Jordan was taken into custody that night. Records show Jordan was sentenced to prison two years in April of 2019 for possession of meth with intent to distribute. Under state law, he became eligible for parole this past January and was released on January 25th. Magistrate court documents out of Clayton County shows arrests dating back to 2017 for weapons possession. 
Officials tell us additional warrants have been obtained, but so far for the current crimes, Jordan is charged with malice murder, three counts of aggravated assault, first degree child cruelty, possession of a firearm during a crime, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Here, 11 Alive storm trackers saying adieu to Beta, once a tropical storm that made its way up the coastline, bringing some heavy rain in Texas. I mean, Houston picked up 20 inches of rain from it. We picked up around one to three, and now that drier air is trying to filter in, but we still have a few little showers out here showing up on the radar. I think this last frame is kind of a uh, one of those evening returns we get, they get thrown in there sometimes. So there's just a few little uh, light showers out there. Very pesky up here in Cherokee County and in Pickens County uh, here in uh, North Fulton, perhaps a little light shower as well. And these are coming in behind that area of low pressure that's moving off to the east. So most of the stronger storms today have been right along the coast in Carolinas. We've had some severe thunderstorm warnings there in the Raleigh-Durham area this evening as well. So that's that's where we're expecting to see the storm stay tonight, as well as uh, around the Augusta area. We've had some popping up as well, and that's exactly where the Storm Prediction Center was expecting to see some severe weather. We are not expecting any storms tonight. Just a few little leftover sprinkles and then let the weekend begin. So let's take a look outside at Rome right now. Remember at this time last night we were watching the rain come down there and it was really heavy at times as well. Uh, so you can see the streets now in Rome have dried out and it's a really pleasant night to be out on the town. Temperatures this morning were very mild in Rome. 65 in Rome was your low temperature. 63 in Canton, 61 in Gainesville, 69 in the Atlanta area. And then during the afternoon, temperatures warmed up. We were still a few degrees below average. We should be at 79 degrees this time of year. We were at 77, 72 in Carrollton, 77 in Rome. So overall temperatures on their way back up. So by tomorrow, we'll see those temperatures back in the low 80s. But before we get there, we're going to be dealing with some patchy areas of dense fog. It'll be a little slow to clear on Saturday, but don't worry. Don't get too concerned about the morning gray because I think we'll see some afternoon sunshine and then it'll be a mostly dry weekend to look forward to as well. So as we get into the evening hours and overnight tonight, we're going to end up seeing those clouds thicken up. Those are those low clouds. Our dew point right now is in the mid 60s. Our temperatures are going to get down into the mid 60s and when your dew point equals your temperature and you have light winds and clear skies you often get clear skies aloft you often get radiation fog at the surface so that's what we're expecting to see as we head into the overnight hours and into tomorrow as well uh, but it should start to lift as we get in towards around 10 11 o'clock we'll start to see it mix out of the atmosphere and then some sunshine kicking in during the afternoon hours and temperatures a few degrees warmer than it was today a little more humid feel as well as we head into the late day hours. So here's what we're expecting to see as we head into midnight. We'll see those showers really starting to dissipate the few showers that are out there. Uh, once we're out and about tomorrow, we're going to see widespread low clouds. There could be a little drizzle involved in that. Uh, but then once we get to lunchtime, that should mix out and we'll see some afternoon sunshine on our Saturday. And then Sunday is start out dry. And then we'll see those clouds increasing as the day wears on. And we'll see some of those showers start to pop up as a frontal system approaches us on our Sunday. And that continues into our Monday as well as we'll see that frontal system moving in, adding a little lift to the atmosphere. So we'll see some showers, possible storms Monday and into Tuesday as well. And then some really cool air spilling in behind it. Some nice, dry, crisp fall like weather ahead. So a foggy start tomorrow, some afternoon sunshine, a nine on the wisometer with temperatures in the low 80s. Just a 20% chance for some showers on Sunday. 40 percent chance on Monday, 30 percent chance on Tuesday, and then really nice by Wednesday as that drier air spills in behind that front and we see those temperatures down close to 50 once again by the end of the week. Enough is enough, America. Enough is enough, America. Enough is enough, America. Enough. It's been a long six months for the family of Brianna Taylor. She was shot and killed by Louisville police during a a search warrant in March. This week we learned the officers will not be charged in connection with her death. The Attorney General reporting that while the officers had no knock warrant, there is evidence they announced their presence before going in and getting into a shootout with Taylor's boyfriend who says he thought that they were intruders.
he shot once. The nationwide outcry over this case, stirring up memories of a familiar one in Atlanta. 14 years ago, Atlanta police officers shot and killed 92-year-old um, 92 Catherine Johnston when serving a no-knock warrant at her home on the West End. But it was the wrong house. Natisha Lance spoke with someone who was close to that case. The, the tragedy that happened to Brianna just reminds me so much of the night that Katherine Johnston was killed. It's been 14 years since Atlanta police officers burst into the Northwest Atlanta home of 92-year-old Katherine Johnston two days before Thanksgiving. Frightened, she grabbed her pistol and shot once to protect herself. Police returned fire 39 times, hitting her six times, killing her. Today, those close to the case see similarities between Johnson's death and the death of Breonna Taylor. It's saddening, and in a lot of ways, it's maddening. Officers entered Johnston's home on a no-knock drug warrant based on bad information. The officers tried to cover up their bad act by planting drug evidence in Johnston's home. The truth of the matter is, it was the process, it was policy and procedure that killed Katherine Johnston, and it's the same thing for Breonna Taylor. Unlike Breonna Taylor's case, the three officers who entered Johnston's home were all arrested and convicted on federal charges. There's still an active federal investigation in Taylor's case, which could lead to charges for the officers. Reverend Marco Hutchins believes Taylor's death presents a new opportunity for systemic change. We have to focus on the solutions and not just being angry or upset, which we have every right to be. But at some point, you've got to turn your pain into power. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. President Trump in Atlanta today and Vice President Pence will be here on Wednesday. Signs the campaign is taking Georgia very seriously. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, we continue to see polls showing a tight race here between the president and Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Is the Trump campaign now greatly concerned about Georgia? Where does that stand on the panic meter as far as looking at the polling from the state? They now treat Georgia the same way they treat Florida and North Carolina, uh, less than, you know, not like how they, quote, treat Ohio. Um, no, they see Georgia as, um, as more of a core battleground state now, and so do the Democrats. I mean, I'll be honest with you, 
I, I talked to quite a few pollsters and strategists over the last three or four months who were three or four months ago were convinced that eh, Georgia won't be there in the fall. Eh, it'll end up the Republicans will slightly pull away. Well, we did see that in Texas, right? We were talking about Georgia and Texas in the spring. And you'd look now in the fall, Texas looks like it's starting to revert more to its lean Republican natural state, but not in Georgia. Um, and it, it look, yes, the Trump campaign takes it that seriously. And I'll tell you what I what do you hear from both of them. They'll say it's the Atlanta suburbs. Yeah. They just keep getting bigger and more diverse. And that has made them more competitive for the Democrats. So on this subject, we've got two Senate races here on the ballot as well. Now, Senator Kelly Leffler released an ad this week that is included that she is more conservative than Attila the Hun. That's trying to play to that base to try to make sure that Doug Collins doesn't take anything away from her. The latest right. Monmouth poll showed it very close, like uh, maybe a, a percentage point or two separating them as, as far as the Republicans go. Right. You know, that ad struck me, Jeff, and I'm very curious if, you, if, if, you, if you've gotten wind of this. That ad struck me as an ad of somebody who thinks they're going to end up in a runoff with a fellow Republican. Because that ad, if she ends up running against Reverend Warnock, I, I just don't see how that ad plays with, with any swing voter um, in, in a runoff. And so it, that was the one question I had. It's sort of like, look, we know that the ad maker on this behind the same ad that the Brian Kemp pickup truck with the gun and all yeah. that stuff. And, and it's designed to sort of grab your attention, shake you by the collar and say, hey, look at me, right? So we know what the, the, the design of the ad is. But I also am wondering, is that the, do they really think that this is going to end up being Collins and Luffler? And, and it just seems like a, a pretty risky strategy uh, to try to to try to um, go far right and 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 somehow hope in just a short period of time you can veer back to the middle in time. Um, but we'll see. I, I found it to be a highly risky ad uh, on the Democrat side. Reverend Warnock against Matt Lieberman. A very interesting story here. Matt Lieberman, of course, the son of Joe Lieberman, the former Connecticut uh, senator. And, mm -hmm. and he has been making some noise. You know, he's been showing some strength. Democrats want him to drop out. Yes, he's he getting has. a lot of pressure wherever he goes. He is, but he's, he's also his poll numbers seem to be going in the wrong direction. He was doing a lot better six months ago than he's doing today. Um, and I think that I, I would say here, I noticed the other day he went on a long Twitter uh, rant, if you will, about sort of this candidacy, complaining that the party is rallying around Reverend Warnock, that it isn't fair. I, I, I have to say, I don't know if that's the best look, and I don't know if that's a helpful way to sort of get you back in to this campaign. Uh, I, I get why he's frustrated, uh, but, you know, this is, this is one of those times where I think the party views party unity as much more important than the feelings of folks. And so I, I I'll be very curious, but I think the pressure on Matt Lieberman is only going to grow. Now, that said, that pressure could end up backfiring uh, mm -hmm. a bit uh, if he continues to sort of publicly push back on the pressure. Meet the press air Sunday morning at 10 here on 11 a lot. Chuck, thanks. Appreciate it. Take for granted the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email. Georgia's COVID-19 curve continues to flatten. The Department of Public Health reports an additional 1,400 cases today. That's right in line with what we've seen over the past couple of days and below our 14-day average. We can see that cases for the most part are trending downward. Unfortunately, that same trend isn't also reflected in the number of lives lost. Over the course of the past week, we have seen our average tick back up slightly. And we love and are so thankful for our health care workers, but they represent nearly 6% of all COVID cases in Georgia. Not only do they put their lives on the line, their families are forced to make difficult decisions. Rebecca Lindstrom takes us beyond the front lines. I envision a time where my son and I would we'll talk about this and what we experienced. Wilbur Kennedy, a respiratory therapist at Grady Healthcare, works in the emergency department all day with patients battling COVID. We're right in their face doing the intubations on the ventilator. Despite the risk, Kennedy says his wife and three boys wanted to stick together, even if it meant staying apart from others. My boys can't go and see their grandmother. Um, and also my neighbor, we had to sever that relationship. I used to take my scrubs off at, at home in the garage. Now there's the change of clothes and this whole scrubbing out all the way to the shoes. The question is always, am I taking this, am I taking this to my family? The CDC tested more than 3,000 nurses, doctors, and respiratory therapists working daily with COVID. It found 6% or 194 of them had antibodies. Men and those with gaps in access to PPE, especially N95 masks, were more likely impacted. Kennedy says at Grady, he has what he needs, but PPE is treated differently. No longer do they throw masks away after one use. Now all of a sudden it's like a really valuable resource that we gotta hang on to. It's a challenge, it's a real challenge. Kennedy watched as elderly family members survived the virus without ever stepping foot inside a hospital. And it's also treated young patients in great shape that didn't make it. I remember reassuring him just before the intubation, tell him, hey, you're in the best place, you're okay. And I'm telling you, it couldn't have been an hour later. We were coding and he was out and it, it, I had to go for a walk that day, that was hard. The number of people coming through these doors is slowly falling. But in Georgia, COVID still kills about 23% of those who go to the hospital with the virus. Is there ever a day where you walk through those doors and you're just, you're tired? You know what? I really love what I do. I had a day here recently where I think we were on about our fifth or sixth intubating, intubated patient in ED, and I leaned over on the ventilator. I'm just like, if I get one more of these, man, I don't, I don't know that I can keep on going. What he needs for people to know is that the virus is a real threat. So we have to treat this thing differently. We can't continue to do the same things and hope that it goes away. 
and he hopes when his boys are older and reflect on their sacrifices in 2020, they'll still look at their father with pride. So it, it just keeps you going, keeps you full of that fire and wanting to keep them impressed. In the midst of this pandemic, a new financial lifeline for struggling small businesses on Atlanta's West End. Our Bill Liz has been following their plight and looks at the impact of this new initiative. For West End small business, COVID-19 has dealt a devastating blow. The West End Merchants Association reports more than 40% of the businesses have closed their doors, many permanently. Many of those surviving are doing it day by day. You have a good one too, appreciate you here. Among them, McDowell Cleaners on Cascade Road, which has been in business 60 years. Starting around March, our business dropped about 60%, and we tried to keep everyone here working um, and it we were really, really stretched thin. We kept the doors open throughout the pandemic. We didn't cut our service any, but it has been difficult with the lack of business. Now Invest Atlanta is stepping in with a critically timed, low interest, multi-million dollar loan program. Over a million dollars will be available in terms of loans. If you include all of our other programs, so specifically to the CARES Act, which is available to the entire city, yes, the number will increase to upwards of $2 million. For Reg Clerk and his McDowell cleaners, loans that will be up to $50,000 can keep him in business. It will give us some working capital, some money to make improvements for our business, like a new delivery vehicle or a new piece of equipment. Do we need badly? Unity National Bank Director George Andrews says this loan program could save the West End. This money is much needed, so businesses can actually survive. This money will be used to give what I call innovative diversity to their products. West End small business owners can go to Invest Atlanta's website and apply right now. For a link, look for the story in the As Seen on TV section of the 11 Alive app. Coming together to help the community. This week, 11 Alive teamed up with a popular app next door to hold panel discussions with local leaders, John Hope Ryan of Operation Hope, DeKalb County Commissioner Lorraine Cochran Johnson, and the young activist Tamika Mallory. They talked about jobs, voting concerns, all what can be done and must be done to improve neighborhoods in our city. I moderated the conversation using questions from you. Here's a small snippet of it. Carl from Five Points is asking, what is the city of Atlanta doing to build stronger neighborhoods and the role of government? Well, in some ways, depending on the level of government you're talking about, it's actually working against building strong neighborhoods because we're not, we're talking at each other, not with each other. We're talking in silos. We are building up uh, mental and psychological walls against each other versus bridges of understanding. We're not bringing each other together. And that should be the at least one of the fundamental tenets of government. I think the local government has done an incredible job. The commissioner has done an incredible job talking to all of her constituencies, black, white, rich, poor, conserv you know, conservative, liberal. The mayor of Atlanta, I think, has done a really good job in this environment. She has told, though, protesters, God bless you. Looters, knock it off. <laughs> uh, black looters, white looters, knock it off. She, she has done a really good job of finding that balance. Um, there's been a lot of leaders in this country who I think are echoing the right values, um, but, but, but we are falling far, far short of our potential in the glory of God. And uh, I think neighborhoods is, is almost a holy creed. I mean, this is something we, it's, it's not something you can do or need to do. It's something you got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, society as we know it falls away. That's my view. I think John hit it that in some ways we're failing terribly. And the ways in which we're failing are very, very damaging. It can't be passed on as an afterthought. Um, I think most uh, people, again, don't trust the system, and they have very real reasons, because it is not so much individuals who are the problem. The entire system, the way that it currently operates, as, mo as many people say, is it, it's operating exactly as it's supposed to. And so we, in a lot of ways, have to look at not reform, but an overhaul of the system where we make some really, really significant changes so that these systems operate uh, where, where all people can feel comfortable and feel as if they can trust 
uh, those elected officials who, and I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk long, but I will say that I agree that many of your local electeds are trying to do amazing work on the ground, but they are, again, working within a system that has not worked for Black people. I'll say that, you know, being new to government mm. um, and coming from a corporate structure and a media background, one of the first things that I realized upon walking into the office was that personally, I felt that there had been a poor job of communication previously. Mm -hmm. um, and how do I go about engaging people? Because what you find is it doesn't matter what you've done if people don't know what you do. You can watch all of it on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. It is there right now. New polling showing a gender divide at the ballot box in our state, what it could mean for the presidential candidates now less than 40 days from the election. Well, it's Friday night, and the timing's pretty good on this. The rain moving off to our east, taking the storms into Charleston right now. A few little pesky showers on the back side of this thing. But coming up, what you can expect for the rest of tonight and as we head into the beginning of the weekend, and when we can expect some real rain moving back in again. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. President Trump facing a bipartisan backlash for refusing to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election. But this morning, he's showing no sign of backing down from his assault on the integrity of the 2020 election. Here's Peter Alexander of NBC. President Trump in Florida overnight urging his supporters to cast their ballots early. We have to win this election, most important election we've ever had. 
Early voting has already begun. Don't wait. Vote. It's safe. Go out and vote. The president has made mail-in ballots the center of his effort to cast doubt on the integrity of the election. Are the election results only legitimate if you win? We have to be very careful with the ballots. The ballots, that's a whole big scam. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. Despite an expected surge in mail-in balloting because of the pandemic, there's no evidence of widespread voter fraud in the U.S., including those sent by mail. Vice President Pence saying this late Thursday. President Trump and I believe we're going to win this election, uh, but uh, look, we'll, uh, we will accept uh, free and uh, fair election results, uh, no doubt about it. After President Trump ignited outrage a day earlier when asked about a peaceful transition if he loses. Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. Top Republicans now weighing in. People wonder about the peaceful transfer of power. I can assure you it will be peaceful. We've had an orderly transfer of power every four years since Washington. That will happen again to the winner of the November 3rd election. Democrats accusing him of acting like a dictator. You are not in Russia, Mr. President. And by the way, you are not in Saudi Arabia. You are in the United States of America. It is a democracy. The president also facing direct criticism at the Supreme Court Thursday while paying his respects to the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The crowd below chanting, vote him out. The president later said he couldn't hear the boos. We heard a sound, but it wasn't very strong. Less than six weeks before Election Day, President Trump is neck and neck with Joe Biden in the battle for Georgia and two other red states. The president fighting to stay ahead of Biden in Georgia, in Georgia and Texas while narrowly trailing him in Iowa. A poll conducted by the New York Times and Siena College shows women voters overwhelmingly support Biden. This gender gap helping the former vice president make inroads into conservative territory. In Georgia, Biden leads among women by 10 points while President Trump is ahead with men by 11 points. We spoke with Emory professor Dr. Andre Gillespie, who says this trend is common because women tend to vote more Democratic. Women being um, more likely in their roles as caretakers to care about issues like education and health care. Um, and, and those are issues that Democrats have a perceptual advantage on. Um, women being, uh, you know, less inclined to support uh, defense policies that would push people to war. So thinking about certain types of gender stereotypes there. Um, also thinking about the impact of second wave feminism um, and just the in general financial independence of women. So these are things that would attract them to the Democratic Party. The New York Times reports the majority of voters say their minds are made up about who they will vote for, leaving relatively little room for late developments to shift the trajectory of the race. Well, we've seen some changes the last 12 hours or so as the moisture has been moving out and a little drier air is trying ever so carefully to filter in. It's just taking a while to get here. So we're going to end up seeing some fog overnight left over from the moisture that moved through. Just a few showers across North Georgia near Helen and Mossy Creek. Really just uh, some sprinkles at this point. And this whole system is moving off to the east, taking with it that threat for storms. It's right now in Charleston. They've had some severe thunderstorms storms this evening, but not around here. We're just still counting up the rain. We had around one to three inches of rain accumulate across North Georgia with, of course, the heaviest amounts here back from whence Beta came, back from Texas and Louisiana and in through the Mississippi River Valley where they had several inches of rain there after dumping 20 inches of rain across southeast Texas. Well, let's take a look outside right now and see how things are shaping up. Well, this is Noonan at the historic courthouse and you can see that things are pretty quiet there tonight. Really nice night to be out. The temperatures are mild and we're going to be warming up this weekend after the fog lifts. So we are going to be seeing some widespread fog overnight. This is just after midnight. We'll start to see that fog form from all the leftover moisture that was dropped yesterday and today. And then by the morning hours, it's going to be pretty dense in some areas. So do be careful if you have an early morning road trip to do. And then as we head into the afternoon, it should start to mix out as temperatures warm up. 
and we'll see it dissipate. So 77 is was our high today, 70 our low, so we were a couple degrees below for a high temperature and several degrees above for a low temperature this morning with all the cloud cover we saw around. So more clouds lingering tonight, continuing to thicken up the low clouds and the fog. And then as we head into our Saturday, we have a nine on the wisometer on that scale of one to an 11 with 11 being a perfect day. We're going to start out kind of gray, but don't worry too much about it. As you look out the window in the morning, you may go, ah, I thought they said it was going to be a nine. I think by the afternoon it will be. And we'll see those temperatures getting into the low 80s with some sunshine mixed with cloud cover. And then throughout the afternoon tomorrow, we'll see those temperatures warm up into the upper 70s and low 80s and a little more sunshine than we have seen in the last couple of days. So as we take a look at what's left of our sprinkles, our few showers out here, and they're going to continue to kind of just fall apart as we head through the overnight hours. We'll have some fog in the morning. Where it's really dense, there could be a little bit of drizzle, and then that'll mix out pretty quickly. So by the afternoon, we should end up seeing things shape up pretty nicely. Still some clouds around, but I think we'll see some peaks of sunshine. No real rain expected on our Saturday. Sunday, we start out dry. It's going to be a pretty nice start to the day. We'll have some clouds out there, and then as the day wears on, we'll see some of those showers start to move in, and that's that will continue as we head into our Monday. So just a 20% chance on Sunday. As we get into Monday, a 40% chance of some showers and storms. We're going to have a frontal system on approach. That will add a little lift to the atmosphere and bring in a bit more rain. So a 40% chance on our Monday. And then on our Tuesday, we'll see the frontal system move in. So right now we have a 30% chance. We may need to adjust that as we get closer and we get more confidence in exactly how much rain we're going to get. But right now it looks like this front will be strong enough to usher in some cooler temperatures. So we'll end up seeing a brisk northerly flow after that front moves through north northwest and that'll bring in some cooler temperatures but not for the weekend we're going to be pretty mild this weekend with low 80s expected we'll see some sunshine and a slight chance for showers on sunday after the fog lifts on saturday I see the sunshine and then on our Monday, a 40% chance, 30% chance on our Tuesday and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday looking great as that crisp fall air filters on in. Food desert is a pretty common term, but coming up, we're looking at maternity deserts and the dangers they present for new or expecting mothers. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. 
on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. We are all familiar with the term food desert, but what about maternity deserts? They are areas of the country where women have limited or no access to obstetrics before, during, and after pregnancy. And according to the March of Dimes, it is becoming more common as more units in the United States are closing. 54% of all counties in the country, women have either no access to maternity care or very limited access. The Nowhere to Go report from the March of Dimes reveals 7 million women of childbearing age live in limited access areas. The organization says the issue impacts both rural and urban areas and disproportionately women of color. The report is calling for expanded access to affordable care and stronger family leave policies. Ahead on prime time, a legal fight for answers are reveal investigators taking on the Cobb County Sheriff in court over public records and those concerns of deaths at his jail. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitary. It's a battle Georgia families have been fighting for five years, how to legally access medical marijuana. In 2015, state lawmakers approved the use of low dose THC for certain medical conditions. Many patients say it's life changing, helping to stop constant pain and easing seizures and other symptoms. But right now there is still no legal way to buy medical marijuana, forcing those who depend on the drug to either leave the state or find underground methods to get it. 
It's an issue the new executive director of the state's Medical Marijuana Commission wants to solve. In the past, where they've been waiting for years and years, that countdown timer is now going in reverse. There are fewer and fewer days ahead that they're going to have to wait to get access to that medicine. The Medical Marijuana Commission meets tomorrow at 10 a.m. to discuss the next steps in the process. That meeting is open to the public if you would like to attend virtually. You'll find much more background on medical marijuana in Georgia and the fight to legalize its purchase inside our 11 Alive app. Just click on the watch button and scroll to the verify section. Racial justice begins with Joe Biden's retirement from public life. Right now on primetime, Battleground Georgia, President Trump hoping to bolster his support from black voters with a new economic initiative. And absentee ballots delayed from reaching some Georgia voters, why the issue goes beyond the post office and how to ensure you receive yours in time. 11 Alive News primetime on the ATL starts now. President Trump making a stop in Metro Atlanta today as the candidates prepare for the home stretch of the upcoming election. The president promising new jobs and new capital business while trying to sway Georgia's black voters who have historically voted Democratic. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more. President Donald J. Trump, take us back to the top. The president's rally started with African-American supporters from Georgia and around the country. He talks about opportunity zones. We need that. Talking up how they've mostly prospered over the last three plus years. As a small business owner, I, you know, I've just seen opportunity after opportunity under this president. So we're, we're ready to reelect him. Linda Vega is a McDonough business owner already sold on Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Now the president wants to bring more African-American voters into the Trump tent with an appeal to build jobs and economic opportunities and turn away from Democrats. And they have taken the black voter for granted. And it's not fair, it's not right, and it's not going to happen because we're going to have such a victory like you've never had before. Trump's campaign is promising more capital for black-owned businesses and more jobs for black families. The president also touched on protests that rekindled this week, suggesting they are driving black voters into his camp. Many of those who are spreading violence in our cities are supporters of an organization called Black Lives Matter, or BLM. It's really, it's really hurting the black community. African Americans, black Americans and black communities want police. They want, as a matter of fact, a lot of cases they want more. They don't want to defund it. Ahead of the president's visit, several black Georgia Democratic leaders held a virtual press conference. They addressed some of the ways they believe the president has failed the black community, particularly during the pandemic. Donald Trump stands up for the people that he wants to stand up for, and he's just not standing up for, for black Americans right now. Under Trump's failed administration, unemployment for black Georgians has grown to almost 12 percent, more than double the average rate. Donald Trump said to us, what do you got to lose by voting for me? Well, I'll tell you what we've lost. We lost jobs. We've lost lives and we've lost faith in an administration that has failed us. Next Wednesday, Vice President Mike Pence will also visit Cobb County, speaking at the Faith and Freedom Coalition Policy Conference. Today, a wave of en endorsements for Georgia Democratic candidates from former President Barack Obama, among them U.S. Senate candidates John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock. He also threw his support behind incumbent Congresswoman Lucy McBath and congressional hopeful Carolyn Bordeaux, as well as seven candidates for the state legislature. In total, Mr. Obama is lending his support to 229 people in 34 states. An 11 Alive viewer contacted our newsroom asking us to check on a possible delay in Gwinnett County voters receiving their absentee ballots. He said he was hearing it was because an out-of-state third party was handling those ballots. So we had our Joe Henke look into it. A number of weeks ago, we both uh, went online, filled out the forms for through the Gwinnett election uh, board. 
John Solson says he and his wife requested to vote absentee, and last week counties started mailing November election absentee ballots. Solson says a Gwinnett County election worker told him his ballot should arrive within the week, but when it still had not shown up this morning, he followed up. What is the delay? Is it the Postal Service or what? She says, no, it's being routed through a third party, and that was New York. It turns out that's true, but it's a little complicated as to why. In Gwinnett County, the Voting Rights Act requires English and Spanish ballots because more than 5% of Gwinnett's voters speak Spanish. In 2019, the Democratic Party of Georgia filed this lawsuit over the county's absentee ballot envelope. The oath voters sign is printed in two languages in six and a half point font. The Democratic Party claimed it was cramped, hard to read, and in the 2018 general election, Gwinnett rejected more absentee ballots for missing or mismatched signatures than any other county. Court filings show a settlement led to this new envelope. The state confirms Gwinnett is printing ballot materials out of state, creating a unique situation. Gwinnett County made a decision to go with an outside firm in New York to fulfill these ballots. And I know that we've checked with them and their process is moving forward right now. Gabriel Sterling the with the Secretary of State's office says the county level decision to print in New York appears to be a source of any potential Gwinnett County ballot delays. There may be some potential delays in Gwinnett, it appears, but we're still investigating to find out where that stands. For voters statewide who have requested an absentee ballot, the state is now using a new service called Ballot Tracks to help you monitor it. The service from a company in Denver gives absentee voters who sign up, email, text, or phone updates as their ballot is printed, mailed, received, and counted. It also contacts you if there's an issue in counting your ballot. It'll give you the email and the phone number of your particular county office to call and find out how to cure that absentee ballot so that your vote will count in November. And we have more information on ballot tracks and a link to sign up if you are voting absentee inside this story on 11alive.com. And we just received a response from Gwinnett County's election board just minutes ago explaining why they had to choose this particular vendor. We're working to get that posted on 11alive.com as soon as we can so you can read their full explanation. NBC News is reporting President Trump is expected to name appellate judge Amy Coney Barrett as his nominee for the Supreme Court. Here's what we know about her. She is a Notre Dame law professor and a former clerk for the late Justice Antonin Scalia. The president declared he would announce his choice tomorrow to replace the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg just one day after the gender rights icon lay in state at the U.S. Capitol. Well, search underway right now for a missing infant. This is a uh, South Fulton police say Angela White took off with her three week old. You see the picture right there. The daughter's name is Israel. She's supposed to be under defects care and they are worried she could be in danger. If you've seen White, call 911. A dog snatcher strikes again in Buckhead. In recent weeks, two cars have been stolen with a puppy inside. Both cars found with little to no damage, but the dogs still missing. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peters spoke with the most recent victim who says her family is just heartbroken. Keep like glancing over where she would be hanging out and she's not there. It's really sad. <laughs> it really is. 11 month old Stormy was nabbed this week off Roswell Road. The owners say they went into a gas station and locked Stormy in the car. And then as soon as Mason came in, he was like, the car is, is not there. And that was the first thing that hit me was, oh my gosh, our dog is in the car. On Friday, the couple's car was found at an apartment complex in southwest Atlanta. They say the car was okay, but Stormy, her crate, and her food were missing. The owners believe the thieves wanted to sell her. Well, she is a French bulldog and she's a purebred. So, I mean, anybody can look at that dog and know it's an expensive dog. It's actually, it's a very expensive dog. Just last month, a Range Rover with a golden doodle puppy inside was stolen from the Whole Foods parking lot off Pace's Ferry Road. The car was later found in good condition, but the dog is still missing. According to Adopt-A-Pet, a French Bulldog can cost up to $8,000. A Golden Doodle, $4,000. Atlanta police say it's too early on to determine whether these two cases are related, but they're asking anyone with information about these animals to contact them at 404-577-TIPS. Healthcare workers are determined to help those diagnosed with COVID-19, even if it means making personal sacrifices. Next, we take a look beyond the front lines. And we're watching the rain move out, and we're going to see a little bit of fog filling in as we head into the overnight hours. So coming up, how long that fog's gonna be sticking around and what you can expect for the rest of your weekend. 
And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section, but don't go anywhere. We've got more 11 Alive news in prime time after the break. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. Alive News has filed a lawsuit against the Cobb County Sheriff, and we filed it because 11 Alive believes the Sheriff's Office has violated state law by withholding public records related to people who have died in its jail. The lawsuit follows a reveal investigation exposing the death of Kivel Wingo. He was a former inmate who died begging for help back in 2019. Here's reveal investigator Andy Parati with the Sheriff's stands for keeping the record secret. Beyond these walls, inmates at the Cobb County Detention Center wait for their day in court. Some often represented by Cindy Yeager, a criminal defense attorney who claims the sheriff does not properly care for detainees. I've gotten three to five letters or more every day from inmates uh, complaining of the treatment that they're getting, the fact they're not allowed out of their cells. According to the county medical examiner's office, at least 50 inmates have died in custody there since 2004, some from natural causes, others under suspicious circumstances, like Cavell Wingo, who died in 2019 begging for medical help. And he actually fell backwards onto the floor and crawled to the window and was asking again, begging for help, and they could not breathe. Nine months before Wingo's death, inmate Reginald Wilson died from dehydration in an isolation room, and jail staff found Bradley Emery hanging in a shower last year. His father repeatedly warned the detention center his son suffered from mental illness. Since he's been in there, I've had to call out there several times. I'm having on suicide watch because he's threatening her on his hurt herself and I'm worried about him. This past August, 11 Alive requested the investigative findings for Emery and Wilson's death long after their case files were closed. The sheriff's office said no, claiming both were still under investigation, not by law enforcement, but by private attorney Nathan Wade, who the county claims promises to investigate their deaths and other inmates who have died there since December 2018 all free of charge. How is an attorney going to do an internal investigation? Do they know the policies and procedures of the detention centers across the state? Do they have the certifications necessary to do a, a, an absolute appropriate and competent evaluation? Earlier this month, 11 Alive filed a lawsuit against Sheriff Neil Warren, alleging Wade's investigation is illusionary and designed not to lead to any bona fide prosecutions regarding the deaths in an effort to shield thousands of public and potentially damaging records from disclosure in an election year. Law enforcement. Ian Burnside is one of the attorneys representing 11 Alive. Yeah, there is an exception that allows law enforcement agencies to withhold records that are a part of a legitimate criminal investigation. 
but that is not intended to allow an elected law enforcement officer to withhold potentially unflattering documents from the public in the run-up to an election. According to 11 Alive's filing, Wade has represented the sheriff in the past, most recently during an election qualification dispute. And the attorney is also a personal friend and former classmate of the sheriff's second-in-command, Chief Deputy Sonia Allen. Is that appropriate? No, I don't think it is appropriate at all. I think it's a smoke screen. I think there's too much political connections. Sheriff Warren did not respond to our interview request for this story or any story we've done about the jail within the past two weeks. 11 Alive has filed a motion asking a judge to hear our case within the next 30 days. Sheriff Warren is up for re-election in 39 days. We are 11 Alive storm trackers watching that drier air try to filter in. This is our water vapor satellite imagery and the blue color on the map indicates drier air trying to work its way in. So our showers are pretty much wrapping up. We haven't had much today, just truly a few sprinkles out there and they are evaporating as we speak. Uh, so the radar is looking pretty quiet at this hour after seeing just a little bit of showery action earlier this evening. So we're watching the frontal system move to the east and boy, it's been producing a lot of severe weather. We really dodged a bullet on beta because we didn't have any severe weather whatsoever as it moved in. We had some decent rain, that's for sure. But the severe weather has been off to our east today. Even have a tornado warning here in South Carolina and Dillon and Marion counties until 945. A severe thunderstorm there that's capable of producing a tornado. And that looks pretty nasty when we're looking at the returns here. So things for us improving as that moves away from us and all the severe weather stormy weather will be off to our east. We're looking down at Rome right now where things are nice and quiet. The winds are calm, the streets are dry, and things are going to be beautiful as we head through the weekend in Rome. Kimberly Morris in Canton posting this picture earlier from Cherokee County of, I almost cut that off, didn't I? I need to move that up. An inch and a half is what she was reporting in her rain gauge. And yesterday, you may remember, we had video from Kimberly's backyard showing some of that heavier rain moving on in during the evening hours. So we're looking at temperatures today that were kept down by all the cloud cover. And we're going to see more cloud cover overnight in the term in the, in the form of low clouds and fog. In fact, we're expecting some dense fog. This is early tomorrow and we can see some very dense fog. So be careful if you have to be out driving in the middle of the night or early in the morning tomorrow. First thing, we'll still have some dense areas of fog. And then once things start to warm up, it'll mix out pretty quickly. So by lunchtime, I think we'll be seeing a little bit of sunshine out there. So 77 was our high, 70 our low. Kind of kept uh, on the mild side in the 70s all night because of all the widespread cloud cover we had during the overnight hours. 79 uh, is where we should be for a high. 62 is where we should be for a low. So expect some penchy, patchy, dense fog. Easy for me to say, patchy, dense fog on your Saturday morning. It'll be clearing out very slowly during the day on Saturday. We'll see some peaks of sunshine and then a mostly dry weekend. We do have a chance for some more showers come Sunday afternoon and evening, but uh, that'll just be a few isolated showers before things get going at the beginning of next week. So as we head through the overnight, expect to see those clouds rolling in and the fog. And then on your Saturday, a nine on the wasometer on that scale of one to an 11 with at 11 being a perfect day, a nine, because we're gonna start it out kind of cloudy and gray. And you're gonna say, what, is there a nine? Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay during the afternoon. We'll see some of that sunshine with temperatures getting into the low 80s after that fog dissipates. And we'll see more sunshine as the afternoon wears on. So no worries if you have some barbecues tomorrow. I think you're going to be A-OK. -okay. So as we head into tonight, those showers that we have seen really starting to dissipate. We'll have plenty of low clouds and fog around, so a gray start tomorrow. As we head through the afternoon, and we're not expecting anything in terms of showers to pop up. On Sunday, we have a few clouds to start and then thickening up throughout the afternoon with a 20% chance of showers and storms, and then a 40% a chance on Monday as a frontal system approaches. And that will get us, you know, during the afternoon and evening, we could have some of the scattered showers and storms and then on Tuesday looks like about a 30 percent chance of some activity as we head into the afternoon and evening as that frontal system moves through and ushers in some cooler air. So a foggy start to our Saturday and then we'll see some sunshine temperatures in the low 80s. Getting into Sunday we'll have temperatures in the low 80s again so about five degrees or so above average 
20% chance of rain, 40% chance on Monday, 30% chance on Tuesday. And then that frontal system ushers in some nice, cool, crisp, gorgeous fall weather for the end of the week. Enough is enough, America. Enough is enough, America. Enough is enough, America. Enough is enough. It has been a long six months for the family of Breonna Taylor after she was shot and killed by Louisville police during a search warrant. This week we learned the officers will not be charged in her death and the attorney general reporting that while the officers had a no knock warrant, one of the witnesses says officers announced their presence before going in and getting into a shootout with Taylor's boyfriend who says he thought they were intruders. He shot once. The nationwide outcry over the case stirring up memories of a similar one here in Atlanta. 14 years ago, Atlanta police officers shot and killed 92 year old Katherine Johnston when serving a no knock warrant at her home, but it was the wrong house. I spoke with someone close to that case. The, the tragedy that happened to Brianna just reminds me so much of the night that Katherine Johnston was killed. It's been 14 years since Atlanta police officers burst into the Northwest Atlanta home of 92 year old Katherine Johnston two days before Thanksgiving. Frightened, she grabbed her pistol and shot once to protect herself. Police returned fire 39 times, hitting her six times, killing her. Today, those close to the case see similarities between Johnston's death and the death of Breonna Taylor. It's saddening and in a lot of ways it's maddening. Officers entered Johnston's home on a no-knock drug warrant based on bad information. The officers tried to cover up their bad act by planting drug evidence in Johnston's home. Truth of the matter is, it was the process, it was policy and procedure that killed Katherine Johnston, and it's the same thing for Breonna Taylor. Unlike Breonna Taylor's case, the three officers who entered Johnston's home were all arrested and convicted on federal charges. There's still an active federal investigation in Taylor's case, which could lead to charges for the officers. Reverend Marco Hutchins believes Taylor's death presents a new opportunity for systemic change. We have to focus on the solutions and not just being angry or upset, which we have every right to be. But at some point, you've got to turn your pain into power. Best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you 
First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. President Trump in Atlanta today and Vice President Pence will be here on Wednesday. Signs the campaign is taking Georgia very seriously. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, we continue to see polls showing a tight race here between the president and Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Is the Trump campaign now greatly concerned about Georgia? Where does that stand on the panic meter as far as looking at the polling from the state? They now treat Georgia the same way they treat Florida and North Carolina, uh, less than, you know, not like how they, quote, treat Ohio. Um, no, they see Georgia as, um, as more of a core battleground state now, and so do the Democrats. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I talked to quite a few pollsters and strategists over the last three or four months who were, three or four months ago, were convinced that eh, Georgia won't be there in the fall, eh, it'll end up, the Republicans will slightly pull away. Well, we did see that in Texas, right? We were talking about Georgia and Texas in the spring, and you'd look now in the fall, Texas looks like it's starting to revert more to its lean Republican natural state, but not in Georgia. Um, and it, it, look, yes, the Trump campaign takes it that seriously. And I'll tell you what, I, what you hear from both of them. They'll say it's the Atlanta suburbs. Yeah. They just keep getting bigger and more diverse, and that has made them more competitive for the Democrats. So on this subject, we've got two Senate races here on the ballot as well. Now, Senator Kelly Leffler released an ad this week that has included that she is more conservative than Attila the Hun. That's trying to play to that base to try to make sure that Doug Collins doesn't take anything away from her. The latest right. Monmouth poll showed it very close, like uh, maybe a, a percentage point or two separating them as, as far as the Republicans go. Right. You know, that ad struck me, Jeff, and I'm very curious if, you, if, if, you, if you've gotten wind of this. That ad struck me as an ad of somebody who thinks they're going to end up in a runoff with a fellow Republican. Because that ad, if she ends up running against Reverend Warnock, I, I just don't see how that ad plays with, with any swing voter um, in, in a runoff. And so it, that was the one question I had. It's sort of like, look, we know that the ad maker on this behind the same ad that the Brian Kemp pickup truck with the gun, all that stuff. And, and it's designed to sort of grab your attention, shake you by the collar and say, hey, look at me, right? So we know what the, the, the design of the ad is. But I also am wondering, is that the, do they really think that this is going to end up being Collins and Loeffler? And, and it just seems like a, a pretty risky strategy uh, to try to, to, try to um, go far right and, 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 and somehow hope in just a short period of time, you can veer back to the middle in time. Um, but we'll see. I, I found it to be a highly risky ad. On, on the Democrat side, Reverend Warnock against Matt Lieberman. A very interesting story here. Matt Lieberman, of course, the son of Joe Lieberman, the former Connecticut uh, senator. And, mm -hmm. and he has been making some noise. You know, he's been showing some strength. Democrats want him to drop out. Yes, he's he getting has. a lot of pressure wherever he goes. He is, but he's, he's also his poll numbers seem to be going in the wrong direction. He was doing a lot better six months ago than he's doing today. Um, and I think that I, I would say here, I noticed the other day he went on a long Twitter uh, rant, if you will, about sort of this candidacy, complaining that the party is rallying around Reverend Warnock, that it isn't fair. I, I, I have to say, I don't know if that's the best look, and I don't know if that's a helpful way to sort of get you back in to this campaign. Uh, I, I get why he's frustrated, uh, but you know this is this is one of those times where I think the party views party unity as much more important than the feelings of folks, and so I, I I'll be very curious. But I think the pressure on Matt Lieberman is only going to grow. Now that said, that pressure could end up backfiring uh, mm -hmm. a bit uh, if he continues to sort of publicly push back on the pressure. Meet the Press airs Sunday morning at 10 here on 11 Alive. Chuck, thanks. Appreciate it. Spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. 
because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. A man recently released on parole now charged in a violent crime spree where a mother was killed, a child shot and gunfire erupted at a Waffle House. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens is looking into the suspect's past. The Clayton County Sheriff's Office shared this photo showing the moments Carl Jordan was arrested. Jordan is accused of going on a crime spree that started Wednesday night at a home on Glen Court in Hampton, Georgia. Police say Jordan shot and killed his ex-girlfriend, then shot her four-year-old and her mother. The child's grandmother tried to escape and get both of them to safety. The grandmother and the four-year-old are expected to be okay. Ten hours later, detectives say Jordan showed up at a Waffle House near McDonough, where he allegedly tried to rob the business and shot yet another woman before fleeing. That victim is recovering. Jordan was taken into custody that night. Records show Jordan was sentenced to prison two years in April of 2019 for possession of meth with intent to distribute. Under state law, he became eligible for parole this past January and was released on January 25th. Magistrate court documents out of Clayton County shows arrests dating back to 2017 for weapons possession. Officials tell us additional warrants have been obtained, but so far for the current crimes, Jordan is charged with malice murder, three counts of aggravated assault, first degree child cruelty, possession of a firearm during a crime, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Georgia's COVID-19 curve continues to flatten. The Department of Public Health reports an additional 1,400 cases today, and that is right in line with what we've seen over the past couple of days and below our 14-day average. We can see that cases, for the most part, are trending downward. Unfortunately, that same trend isn't also reflected in the number of lives lost. Over the course of the past week, we have seen our average tick back up slightly. We love and are so thankful for our healthcare workers, but they represent nearly 6% of all COVID cases here in Georgia. Not only do they put their lives on the line, but their families are also forced to make difficult decisions. Rebecca Lindstrom takes us beyond the front lines. Vision a time where my son and I would we'll talk about this and what we experienced. Wilbur Kennedy, a respiratory therapist at Grady Healthcare, works in the emergency department all day with patients battling COVID. We're right in their face doing the intubations on the ventilator. Despite the risk, Kennedy says his wife and three boys 
wanted to stick together, even if it meant staying apart from others. My boys can't go and see their grandmother. Um, and also my neighbor, we had to sever that relationship. I used to take my scrubs off at, at home in the garage. Now there's the change of clothes and this whole scrubbing out all the way to the shoes. The question is always, am I taking this, am I taking this to my family? The CDC tested more than 3,000 nurses, doctors, and respiratory therapists working daily with COVID. It found 6%, or 194 of them, had antibodies. Men and those with gaps in access to PPE, especially N95 masks, were more likely impacted. Kennedy says at Grady, he has what he needs, but PPE is treated differently. No longer do they throw masks away after one use. Now all of a sudden it's like a really valuable resource that we got to hang on to. It's a challenge, it's a real challenge. Kennedy watched as elderly family members survived the virus without ever stepping foot inside a hospital. And it's also treated young patients in great shape that didn't make it. I remember reassuring him just before the intubation, tell him, hey, you're in the best place, you're okay. And I'm telling you, it couldn't have been an hour later. We were coding, and he was out, and it, it, I had to go for a walk that day. That was hard. The number of people coming through these doors is slowly falling. But in Georgia, COVID still kills about 23% of those who go to the hospital with the virus. Is there ever a day where you walk through those doors and you're just, you're tired? You know what? I really love what I do. And I had a day here recently where I think we were on about our fifth or sixth intubating, intubated patient in ED, and I leaned over on the ventilator. I'm just like, if I get one more of these, man, I don't, I don't know that I can keep on going. What he needs for people to know is that the virus is a real threat. So we have to treat this thing differently. We can't continue to do the same things and hope that it goes away. And he hopes when his boys are older and reflect on their sacrifices in 2020, they'll still look at their father with pride. So it, it just keeps you going, keeps you full of that fire and wanting to keep them impressed. A new financial lifeline for struggling small businesses on Atlanta's West End. Bill Liss has been following their plight and looks at the impact of this new initiative. For West End small business, COVID-19 has dealt a devastating blow. The West End Merchants Association reports more than 40% of the businesses have closed their doors, many permanently. Many of those surviving are doing it day by day. You have a good one too, appreciate you here. Among them, McDowell Cleaners on Cascade Road, which has been in business 60 years. Starting around March, our business dropped about 60%, and we tried to keep everyone here working um, and it we were really, really stretched thin. We kept the doors open throughout the pandemic. We didn't cut our service any, but it's been difficult with the lack of business. Now Invest Atlanta is stepping in with a critically timed, low interest, multi-million dollar loan program. Over a million dollars will be available in terms of loans. If you include all of our other programs, so specifically to the CARES Act, which is available to the entire city, yes, the number will increase to upwards of $2 million. For Reg Clerk and his McDowell cleaners, loans that will be up to $50,000 can keep him in business. It will give us some working capital, some money to make improvements for our business, like a new delivery vehicle or a new piece of equipment. Do we need badly? Unity National Bank Director George Andrews says this loan program could save the West End. This money is much needed, so businesses can actually survive. This money will be used to give what I call innovative diversity to their products. West End small business owners can go to Invest Atlanta's website and apply right now. For a link, Look for the story in the As Seen on TV section of the 11 Alive app. Coming together to help the community this week, 11 Alive teamed up with the popular app Next Door to hold a panel discussion with local leaders. 
John Hope Bryant of Operation Hope, DeKalb County Commissioner Lorraine Cochran Johnson, and activist Tamika Mallory. They talked about jobs, voting concerns, and what we all can do to improve neighborhoods and our city. Jeff Hollinger mo moderated the conversation using questions from the best source coming from all of you. And here's just a small portion of it. Carl from Five Points is asking, what is the city of Atlanta doing to build stronger neighborhoods in the role of government? Well, in some ways, depending on the level of government you're talking about, it's actually working against building strong neighborhoods because we're not, we're talking at each other, not with each other. We're talking in silos. We are building up uh, mental and psychological walls against each other versus bridges of understanding. We're not bringing each other together. And that should be the at least one of the fundamental tenets of government. I think the local government has done an incredible job. The commissioner has done an incredible job talking to all of her constituencies, black, white, rich, poor, conserv you know, conservative, liberal. The mayor of Atlanta, I think, has done a really good job in this environment. She has told, though, protesters, God bless you. Looters, knock it off. <laughs> uh, black looters, white looters, knock it off. She, she has done a really good job of finding that balance. Um, there's been a lot of leaders in this country who I think are echoing the right values, um, but, but, but we are falling far, far short of our potential and the glory of God. And uh, I think neighborhoods is, is almost a holy creed. I mean, this is something we, it's, it's not something you can do or need to do. It's something you got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the society as we know it falls away. That's my view. I think John hit it that in some ways we're failing terribly. And the ways in which we're failing are very, very damaging. It can't be passed on as an afterthought. Um, I think most uh, people, again, don't trust the system and they have very real reasons because it is not so much individuals who are the problem. The entire system, the way that it currently operates, as, mo as many people say, is it, it's operating exactly as it's supposed to. And so we, in a lot of ways, have to look at not reform, but an overhaul of the system where we make some really, really significant changes so that these systems operate uh, where, where all people can feel comfortable and feel as if they can trust uh, those elected officials who, and I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk long, but I will say that I agree that many of your local electeds are trying to do amazing work on the ground, but they are, again, working within a system that has not worked for Black people. I'll say that, you know, being new to government mm. um, and coming from a corporate structure and a media background, one of the first things that I realized upon walking into the office was that personally I felt that there had been a poor job of communication previously. Um, and how do I go about engaging people? Because what you find is it doesn't matter what you've done if people don't know what you do. You can watch the full conversation on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. Well, new polling shows a gender divide at the ballot box here in Georgia. What it could mean for the presidential candidates less than 40 days away from election. Well, most of the rain has moved out, but still quite a few clouds around, making for kind of a spooky shot that Lindsey Kane, one of our 11 Alive storm trackers, captured in Roswell of the waxing gibbous moon shrouded in clouds. So coming up, how long these clouds are going to hang around this weekend and what you can expect as we head into next week and maybe some rain returns. We'll have details on that coming up. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. 
Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. President Trump is facing bipartisan backlash for refusing to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election. But this morning, he's showing no sign of backing down from his assault on the integrity of the 2020 election. Peter Alexander reports. President Trump in Florida overnight, urging his supporters to cast their ballots early. We have to win this election, most important election we've ever had. Early voting has already begun. Don't wait, vote, it's safe, go out and vote. The president has made mail-in ballots the center of his effort to cast doubt on the integrity of the election. Are the election results only legitimate if you win? We have to be very careful with the ballots. The ballots, that's a whole big scam. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. Despite an expected surge in mail-in balloting because of the pandemic, there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud in the U.S., including those sent by mail. Vice President Pence saying this late Thursday. President Trump and I believe we're going to win this election, uh, but uh, look, we'll, uh, we will accept uh, free and uh, fair election results, uh, no doubt about it. After President Trump ignited outrage a day earlier when asked about a peaceful transition if he loses. Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. Top Republicans now weighing in. People wonder about the peaceful transfer of power. I can assure you it will be peaceful. We've had an orderly transfer of power every four years since Washington. That will happen again to the winner of the November 3rd election. Democrats accusing him of acting like a dictator. You are not in Russia, Mr. President. And by the way, you are not in Saudi Arabia. You are in the United States of America. It is a democracy. The president also facing direct criticism at the Supreme Court Thursday while paying his respects to the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The crowd below chanting, vote him out. The president later said he couldn't hear the boos. We heard a sound, but it wasn't very strong. Well, we have been talking about the election for months, and we are now just six weeks away from Election Day. President Trump is neck and neck with Joe Biden in the battle for Georgia and two other red states. The president fighting to stay ahead of Biden in Georgia and Texas while narrowly trailing him in Iowa. A poll conducted by The New York Times and Siena College shows women voters overwhelmingly support Biden. This gender gap helping the former vice president make inroads into conservative territory. 
Here in Georgia, Biden leads among women by 10 points, while President Trump is ahead with men by 11 points. We spoke with Emory Professor Andra Gillespie, who says this trend is common because women tend to vote more Democratic. Women being um, more likely in their roles as caretakers to care about issues like education and health care, um, and, and those are issues that Democrats have a perceptual advantage on. Um, women being, uh, you know, less inclined to support uh, defense policies that would push people to war. So thinking about certain types of gender stereotypes there. Um, also thinking about the impact of second wave feminism um, and just the in general financial independence of women. So these are things that would attract them to the Democratic Party. The New York Times reports the majority of voters say they've already made up their minds about who they will vote for, leaving relatively little room for late developments to shift the trajectory of the race. Well, I, I think that we were very lucky so far this uh, storm with beta that we didn't have a system like Sally that brought down all those trees across North Georgia. So uh, we're bidding adieu to beta at this hour and watching temperatures that are going to be heating up this weekend. In fact, a nice warm pattern. High pressure will be building in that will suppress any showers that try to develop here. So temperatures today were in the 70s pretty much all night and all day long, but we're going to be into the 80s as we head into this weekend. So let's take a look at where beta is. Beta is moving on out and taking any showers along with it. Our, um, actually, beta is no longer a name system, so I shouldn't refer to it that way, but the remnants of beta. Um, but this is why we're so lucky that frontal system uh, has been the focus of activity today across the Carolinas. Also along our coast, we've had some very strong storms and the, we were lucky that we didn't see any severe weather out of the system at all. It's been all along the coastline today. We did have that tornado warning that was in uh, northeastern South Carolina. It has since expired, but they're getting some really heavy rain in there at around two and three quarters inches per hour. So what's left of beta pushing off the coast? Uh, post-tropical, of course, but still has that tropical moisture, tropical type banding that tends to create these uh, spin up systems. And that's why we've seen some of those severe thunderstorms today across the coastline. And that's what the Storm Prediction Center has been saying the last couple of days that would be the focus of the activity. So bingo for them. We're looking at those low temperatures that were down in the low 60s in Gainesville this morning, mid 60s in Rome and in Carrollton. We were near 70 in Thomaston and highs today all across North Georgia were in the 70s. So we, oh, we actually had low 80s in Eatonton and Thomaston. So some warmer temperatures to the south. So overnight tonight we will have some dense fog so look out for that slow clearing of that fog on Saturday but by the afternoon we'll see some peaks of sunshine and a mostly dry weekend to get out and enjoy so overnight tonight we'll end up seeing those clouds continue to thicken up those low clouds and the fog and then as we head into tomorrow that fog will dissipate by lunchtime and then we'll see some peaks of sunshine in the afternoon a nice day to get things done it'll be a little hotter than it has been so far this week but we're talking low 80s as we head into the afternoon afternoon. So we're looking at just a few showers that'll be dissipating overnight. Still seeing some of those stubborn clouds hanging in there in the morning. There may be a little drizzle, but fear not. It will be dissipating by the afternoon. We'll see some breaks in the cloud cover and high pressure building in should put the kibosh on any showers that try to form. And then once we get into our Sunday, a few clouds to start and then during the afternoon hours, some showers will try to work their way in here on Sunday, just a 20% chance on our afternoon and evening. And then once we get into Sunday uh, night, we'll start to see some of that rain move in. So our Sunday, we have a 40% chance, excuse me, a Monday, we have a 40% chance of showers and storms. Tuesday, a 30% chance. And we may have to up to Tuesday. This frontal system is looking pretty impressive on the Euro model, not as impressive on the GFS and the American model. So we'll watch this carefully. We may have to up the rain chances on Tuesday, but one thing we're pretty sure of is behind this front, we'll get a good blast of crisp, dry 
air. So that'll make it feel more fall like once again. So a foggy start to your weekend and we'll see some sunshine in the afternoon on Saturday. 20% chance of showers on Sunday with mostly cloudy skies. It won't be a sunny blue sky weekend, unfortunately, but it'll be mostly dry. 40% chance Monday, 30% chance Tuesday. And there's that dry, coolish air that comes in towards the end of the week. And that's when we'll see those bright blue skies and plenty of fall like sunshine. You've likely heard of food deserts, but what about maternity deserts? They're areas of the country where women have limited or no access to maternity care before, during, or after pregnancy. And according to the March of Dimes, it's becoming more and more common as maternity units in the U.S. close. 54% of all counties in the country, women have either no access to maternity care or very limited access. The Nowhere to Go report from the March of Dimes reveals 7 million women of childbearing age live in limited access areas. The organization says the issue impacts both rural and urban areas and disproportionately women of color. The report is calling for expanded access to affordable care and stronger family leave policies. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you. Sometimes you have to think inside the box, the television box that is, to get your message across. And that is what voting rights advocate Stacey Abrams is doing, leading, lending rather, her voice to the TV show Blackish. She'll guest star in a special animated episode focusing on the November presidential election. Abrams will help the Johnson family navigate the issues as Dad Dre, who is played by actor Anthony Anderson, um, as he begins to explore local politics, the episode is set to air early next month. 
Okay, for your weekend, we'll have a little bit of a foggy start in the early morning hours, but by the afternoon, that fog should dissipate and we should start to see a little bit of sunshine and that'll warm us up a bit more. We should be about five degrees or so warmer tomorrow than we were today, right around 82 tomorrow, 83 on Sunday with about a 20% chance of some showers as a frontal system approaches. That front could bring in a, a decent amount of activity Monday, Tuesday. We'll continue to update that over the weekend as that front gets closer to us. And then things dry out by the middle of the week. Check that out. Some nice crisp fall weather <laughs> once we get to the end of next week. Sweater weather. Right? I That's love what's sweater coming weather. Us. <laughs> All right. We will see you back here in just a little bit with Jeff Hollinger for more prime time. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. News primetime on the ATL starts now. Racial justice begins with Joe Biden's retirement from public life. Tonight at 10, Battleground, Georgia, President Trump hoping to bolster his support from black voters with a new economic initiative. A violent crime spree with a mother killed, her four year old shot and gunfire at a Waffle House, the man now charged, recently out of prison. And the founder of the local activist group charged with fraud, how the FBI says he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations. First tonight, hundreds of people marched through downtown Atlanta today protesting no-knock warrants and calling for justice for Breonna Taylor. The particular type of warrant is what allowed officers to enter Ms. Taylor's home in Louisville, Kentucky in March. 
The 26-year-old EMT was shot and killed by police. And although the Kentucky Attorney General says the officers did announce themselves before entering the apartment, her death has brought attention to the use of no-knock warrants. 11 Alive's Brendan Keefe was in downtown as protesters have called for reform. A large group gathered here at Atlanta Police Headquarters and marched to the state capitol. Their message, the killings of young black men by police must stop. They repeated the names of victims of police killings from across the nation and here in Atlanta. There were also mothers of young black men who had been killed in encounters with police here in Atlanta, and they spoke passionately also about ending no-knock warrants, warrants where the police can essentially enter a home on a warrant signed by a judge without knocking first. That has been controversial. It has also been deadly across the nation. The message here is not only about peace, but it is about justice. And you hear that same call again and again. No justice, no peace. And the call for justice is one that has gone unanswered in the minds of many people. But what we did see here tonight on the streets of Atlanta was peace, a very peaceful march. Police were at a standoff distance, did not engage the protesters in any way. They were able to march through the streets all the way to the state capitol and back to Atlanta police headquarters without incident. And they were able to get their message across. That's the story from Atlanta police headquarters. I'm Brendan Keith. The family of Breonna Taylor speaking for the first time with the reporters after a Kentucky grand jury and attorney general decided not to directly charge three police officers in her death. Ms. Taylor's mother too emotional to speak, her aunt instead speaking. I knew Cameron would never do his job, but what I do know is that him and countless others will go to bed sleeping with Breonna's face, still hearing her say her name. Cameron alone didn't fail her but it ended with a lack of investigation failed her. The officer who told a lie to obtain a search warrant failed her. The judge who signed the search warrant failed her. The terrorist who broke down her door failed her. The system as a whole has failed her. The family's attorneys again calling for the recordings and transcripts from the grand jury proceeding to be released, asking if anyone gave a voice to Breonna Taylor. Protests have continued in Louisville for more than 100 days, growing in intensity since the middle of the week. Yeah. President Trump making a stop in Metro Atlanta today as the candidates prepare for the home stretch of the upcoming election. The president promising new jobs and new capital business while trying to sway Georgia's black voters, who of course have voted Democratic over the decades. The rally started with African-American supporters from Georgia and around the country talking about how they are mostly prospering over the last three plus years. As a small business owner, uh, you know, I've just seen opportunity after opportunity under this president. So we're, we're ready to reelect him. President Trump's campaign is promising more capital for black owned businesses and more jobs for families. They have taken the black voter for granted. And it's not fair, it's not right, and it's not going to happen because we're going to have such a victory like you've never had before. An 11 Alive poll in June showed only about 10 percent of black voters in Georgia support President Trump. Vice President Mike Pence also expected to travel to Cobb County next week. He is scheduled to speak at a faith conference on Wednesday. Meanwhile, ahead of the president's visit today, several black Georgia Democratic leaders addressed some of the ways that they believe the president has failed black America. With COVID as a pre-existing condition and the Affordable Care Act torn to shreds, black Georgians who have been disproportionately exposed to the virus will be left out in the cold. We can't let that happen. And black Georgians won't let this crisis get worse. We'll do absolutely everything we can to make sure that we elect Democrats up and down the ballot to stop the Republican assaults on our rights and protect our democracy. Four years ago, as you recall, Donald Trump said to us, what do you got to lose by voting for me? Well, I'll tell you what we've lost. We've lost jobs. We've lost lives. And we've lost faith in an administration that has failed us. National Democrats are also playing up Joe Biden's work with the black community. We talked with a member of the Congressional Black Caucus who says the choice between Biden and the president is an easy one. His life had been so strong on issues important to us. 
that the first African-American president chose him to be his vice president. And, and if that were not enough, then he just chose uh, uh, the first African-American woman to be uh, his vice president. I mean, look, there's just no comparison here. And I, I always feel silly trying to come up with something uh, that would make uh, the president look better. I mean, after all, he's still uh, my president as well. Uh, but his history with African-Americans is just awful. Our political team dedicated to offering context, perspective, and analysis on the races that impact you and your community. If you have a story you want us, our political team to look into, just email us as where ATL speaks at 11alive.com. Let's get you caught up on some other big stories that are occurring today in the headlines. A leader of a group called Black Lives Matter of Greater Atlanta was arrested by the FBI today on fraud charges. Agents raided a home in Toledo, Ohio, and arrested Sir Major Page. His real name is Tyree Conyers Page. He is accused of using more than $200,000 in donations from the Black Lives Matter of Greater Atlanta social media page to pay for items for him. That includes some food and entertainment furniture and tailored suits. The FBI says he told people asking about the money that it would be going to causes related to social justice and the George Floyd case. Sir Major Page's organization is not affiliated with Black Lives Matter of Atlanta, despite having a similar name. You now have more time to complete your 2000, uh, your 2020 census. A federal judge has extended the deadline through the end of October. That decision comes after civil rights groups and local governments sued the census, arguing a shortened timeline would undercount minorities. Remember, you can complete online. You can do it by mail or in person or by calling the census hotline. You can find that number on 11alive.com. 59 cats safely rescued from a Sandy Springs condominium. Lifeline's Fulton County Animal Services found cats and kittens living in what they call awful conditions, unsanitary, of course. A another 15 dead cats were found inside the home freezer. The owner of the home has not been charged yet. Police are waiting to see if uh, the evidence can be done on, on the cats, the uh, necropsies. Uh, if they show foul play, the Sandy Springs Police Department says it, then we'll take over that investigation. A man recently released on parole now charged in a violent crime spree where a mother was killed, a child was shot, and gunfire erupted at a Waffle House. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens looking into the suspect's past. The Clayton County Sheriff's Office shared this photo showing the moment Carl Jordan was arrested. Jordan is accused of going on a crime spree that started Wednesday night at a home on Glen Court in Hampton, Georgia. Police say Jordan shot and killed his ex-girlfriend, then shot her four-year-old and her mother. The child's grandmother tried to escape and get both of them to safety. The grandmother and the four-year-old are expected to be okay. Ten hours later, detectives say Jordan showed up at a Waffle House near McDonough, where he allegedly tried to rob the business and shot yet another woman before fleeing. That victim is recovering. Jordan was taken into custody that night. Records show Jordan was sentenced to prison two years in April of 2019 for possession of meth with intent to distribute. Under state law, he became eligible for parole this past January and was released on January 25th. Magistrate court documents out of Clayton County shows arrests dating back to 2017 for weapons possession. Officials tell us additional warrants have been obtained, but so far for the current crimes, Jordan is charged with malice murder, three counts of aggravated assault, first-degree child cruelty, possession of a firearm during a crime, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. All right, coming up, health care workers are determined to help those diagnosed with COVID-19, even if it means making personal sacrifices. Next, a look beyond the front lines. Well, the weekend is upon us and a pretty good warm up is going to be underway across much of the country, including right here in the ATL. So coming up as we head through this weekend, what you can expect and when we can see the return of some cool, crisp fall weather. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. 
because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with Georgia's COVID-19 curve continues to flatten. That's some good news on a Friday night. The Department of Public Health reporting an additional 1,400 cases today, and that is right in line with what we have seen over the past couple of days and below our 14-day average. We can see that cases, for the most part, are trending downward. Let's keep it rolling that way. Unfortunately, that same trend isn't reflected in the number of lives lost over the course of of the last week, we have seen our average tick back up ever so slightly. We are thankful for healthcare workers, of course, but they represent nearly 6% of all COVID cases in Georgia. Not only do they put their lives on the line, but their families are forced to make some very difficult decisions. Here's Rebecca Lindstrom. <laughs> vision a time where my son and I would we'll talk about this and what we experienced. Wilbur Kennedy, a respiratory therapist at Grady Healthcare, works in the emergency department all day with patients battling COVID. We're right in their face doing the intubations on the ventilator. Despite the risk, Kennedy says his wife and three boys wanted to stick together, even if it meant staying apart from others. My boys can't go and see their grandmother. Um, and also my neighbor, we had to sever that relationship. I used to take my scrubs off at at home in the garage. Now there's the change of clothes and this whole scrubbing out all the way to the shoes. The question is always, am I taking this, am I taking this to my family? The CDC tested more than 3,000 nurses, doctors, and respiratory therapists working daily with COVID. It found 6% or 194 of them had antibodies. Men and those with gaps in access to PPE, especially N95 masks, were more likely impacted. Kennedy says at Grady, he has what he needs, but PPE is treated differently. No longer do they throw masks away after one use. Now all of a sudden it's like a really valuable resource that we got to hang on to. It's a challenge, it's a real challenge. Kennedy watched as elderly family members survived the virus without ever stepping foot inside a hospital. And he's also treated young patients in great shape that didn't make it. I remember reassuring him just before the intubation, telling him, hey, you're in the best place, you're okay. And I'm telling you, it couldn't have been an hour later. We were coding and he was out and it, it, I had to go for a walk that day, that was hard. The number of people coming through these doors is slowly falling, but in Georgia, COVID still kills about 23% of those who go to the hospital with the virus. Is there ever a day where you walk through those doors and you're just, you're tired? You know what? I really love what I do. And I had a day here recently where I think we were on about our fifth or sixth intubating, intubated patient in ED and I leaned over on the ventilator. I'm just like, if I get one more of these, man, I don't, I don't know that I can keep on going. What he needs for people to know is that the virus is a real threat. So we have to treat this thing differently. We can't continue to do the same things and hope that it goes away. And he hopes when his boys are older and reflect on their sacrifices in 2020, they'll still look at their father with pride. So it just keeps you going, keeps you full of that fire and wanting to keep them impressed. 
All right, weekend forecast. Samantha Moore is here and has, you, you keep using the word crisp. I like that. That's a, that's a good word. I know. Towards the end of the week, it's going to be that perfect fall weather once again, like we saw at the start of fall. And like it, it seems, I know, it, we, we love that kind of weather around here. And the leaves starting to change, just starting to notice a few trees. And it's fun to watch the progress each day as you drive to work and the trees change a little bit each time. Where we're looking at drier air filtering in, it's not going to be crisp this weekend yet, but it will be drier. Once we get into our Saturday afternoon, you'll definitely feel that. And the showers are ending as that drier air filters in. Most of the storms have been here along the uh, Georgia coast as well as along the Carolina coast, where we've seen some heavy downpours and some frequent lightning and some gusty winds. And now what's left of beta working its way off to sea. So the only threat for storms right along that Carolina coastline yet tonight here. We are storm free for the weekend and mostly dry for the weekend. So as we take a look outside, you can see that things are a little on the cloudy side here. And in fact, uh, Atlanta uh, skyline looking shrouded in clouds as Teresa Sykes took this picture today uh, over Atlanta or while she was in Atlanta. Thank you to our 11 Alive storm tracker Teresa Sykes and Lindsay Kane in Roswell also showing the clouds out there shrouding this waxing gibbous moon. That means it'll be full in just at the beginning of October. So it's starting to get closer to that full harvest moon look that we all love to see too. So we're looking at the conditions around here on the mild side today. We were in the 70s all day long and we'll be in the 80s once we get into the weekend. So all those clouds kept our temperatures pretty uh, homogenized today from 70 to 77. And then we should be around 79 for a high and 62 for a low. So it kind of kept our temperatures on the mild side all day long. So expect to see some dense fog overnight. There'll be some slow clearing, slow clearing as we head into Saturday and then a mostly dry weekend. Now we do have a chance for showers on Sunday. But I think for the most part, the weekend will be mostly dry. Some folks won't see any of that rain on Sunday yet. Not everyone will see it. So the next 12 hours, we're going to end up seeing those clouds continue to thicken up. We'll have plenty of low clouds and fog uh, during the overnight hours. And then it should start to dissipate by lunchtime. So we're giving a 9 to the wasometer on that scale of 1 to 11, with 11 being a perfect day, a 9, because it's going to be pretty nice once we get to the afternoon and temperatures will be a few degrees above average. And then as we head into Sunday, uh, excuse me, into the day on Saturday, we're going to see the, the fog start to dissipate, more sunshine returning. So any showers that may be out there tonight, any sprinkles, they're not going to really amount to anything. By the afternoon, we'll see plenty of sunshine. And by Sunday, we'll have a dry start to the day and then a few showers moving in in the afternoon and evening. Can't rule out an isolated thunderstorm or two, but a better chance on Monday, 40% chance on Monday. And then right now, 30% chance on Tuesday. We might have to adjust that. The model's in disagreement about exactly uh, how impactful that frontal system will be in terms of rain. But we do know it'll bring in that crisp weather that Jeff was talking about for the end of next week. So a mostly dry weekend to look forward to. Just a 20% chance of rain on Sunday. 40% chance on Monday, 30% chance for now on Tuesday. We may have to adjust that. And then towards the end of the week, it'll be nice and crisp and beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, look at this shot. Sunflowers at Fawcett Farms. This is Jerry Rogers, one of our 11 Alive Storm trackers, posting this weather wow moment, just showing that field of sunflowers beneath that blue azure sky. Just absolutely gorgeous. If you'd like to contribute to our 11 Alive Storm Tracker Facebook group, we'd love to have you. Just Go to that page and on Facebook, the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and sign up. And hopefully we'll see your work right here. All right, coming up next, a warning from a woman in Buckhead. After her car was stolen, she thinks the thief wasn't after her vehicle, but after her dog. How bad does that get? We take for granted the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you first responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. 
take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In recent weeks, two cars have been stolen in Buckhead with a dog inside. Both vehicles found little to no damage, but the dog's missing. Here's 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter speaking to one of the most recent victims who says his family is heartbroken. Keep like glancing over where she would be hanging out, and she's not there. It's really sad. <laughs> it really is. 11-month-old Stormy was nabbed this week off Roswell Road. The owners say they went into a gas station and locked Stormy in the car. And as soon as Mason came in, he was like, the car is, is not there. And that was the first thing that hit me was, oh my gosh, our dog is in the car. On Friday, the couple's car was found at an apartment complex in southwest Atlanta. They say the car was okay, but Stormy, her crate, and her food were missing. The owners believe the thieves wanted to sell her. Well, she is a French Bulldog, and she's a purebred, so, I mean, anybody can look at that dog and know it's an expensive dog. It's actually, it's a very expensive dog. Just last month, a Range Rover with a Golden Doodle puppy inside was stolen from the Whole Foods parking lot off Pace's Ferry Road. The car was later found in good condition, but the dog is still missing. According to Adopt a Pet, a French Bulldog can cost up to $8,000. A Golden Doodle, $4,000. Atlanta police say it's too early on to determine whether these two cases are related, but they're asking anyone with information about these animals to contact them at 404-577-TIPS. A legal fight for answers are reveal investigators taking on the Cobb County Sheriff in court over public records and concerns over deaths at his jail. Absentee ballots delayed from reaching some Georgia voters while the issue goes beyond the post office and how to ensure you receive yours in time. There's in this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Alive News has filed a lawsuit against the Cobb County Sheriff. We have filed it because 11 Alive believes the Sheriff's Office has violated state law by withholding public records related to people who have died in its jail. The lawsuit follows a reveal investigation exposing the death of Cavell Wingo, a former inmate who died begging for medical help in 2019. Here's reveal investigator Andy Parati with the Sheriff's excuse for keeping the record secret. Beyond these walls, inmates at the Cobb County Detention Center wait for their day in court. Some often represented by Cindy Yeager, a criminal defense attorney who claims the sheriff does not properly care for detainees. I've gotten three to five letters or more every day from inmates uh, complaining of the treatment that they're getting, the fact they're not allowed out of their cells. According to the county medical examiner's office, at least 50 inmates have died in custody there since 2004, some from natural causes, others under suspicious circumstances, like Cavell Wingo, who died in 2019 begging for medical help. And he had actually fell backwards onto the floor and then crawled to the window and was asking again, begging for help, and they could not breathe. Nine months before Wingo's death, inmate Reginald Wilson died from dehydration in an isolation room, and jail staff found Bradley Emery hanging in a shower last year. His father repeatedly warned the detention center his son suffered from mental illness. Since he's been in there, I've had to call out there several times I'm having on suicide watch because he's threatening her on his hurt herself and I'm worried about him. This past August, 11 Alive requested the investigative findings for Emery and Wilson's death long after their case files were closed. The sheriff's office said no, claiming both were still under investigation, not by law enforcement, but by private attorney Nathan Wade, who the county claims promises to investigate their deaths and other inmates who have died there since December 2018, all free of charge. How is an attorney going to do an internal investigation? Do they know the policies and procedures of the detention centers across the state? 
Do they have the certifications necessary to do a, a, an absolute appropriate and competent evaluation? Earlier this month, 11 Alive filed a lawsuit against Sheriff Neil Warren, alleging Wade's investigation is illusionary and designed not to lead to any bona fide prosecutions regarding the deaths in an effort to shield thousands of public and potentially damaging records from disclosure in an election year. Law enforcement. Ian Burnside is one of the attorneys representing 11 Alive. Yeah, there is an exception that allows law enforcement agencies to withhold records that are part of a legitimate criminal investigation, but that is not intended to allow an elected law enforcement officer to withhold potentially unflattering documents from the public in the run-up to an election. According to 11 Alive's filing, Wade has represented the sheriff in the past, most recently during an election qualification dispute. And the attorney is also a personal friend and former classmate of the sheriff's second-in-command, Chief Deputy Sonia Allen. Is that appropriate? No, I don't think it is appropriate at all. I think it's a smoke stream. I think there's too much political connections. Sheriff Warren did not respond to our interview request for this story or any story we've done about the jail within the past two weeks. 11 Alive has filed a motion asking a judge to hear our case within the next 30 days. Sheriff Warren is up for re-election in 39 days. An 11 Alive viewer contacted our newsroom asking us to check on a possible delay in Gwinnett County voters receiving their absentee ballots. He said that he was hearing it was because of an out-of-state third party was handling the ballots. So we sent Joe Hankey to look into it. A number of weeks ago, we both uh, went online, filled out the forms for through the Gwinnett Election uh, Board. John Solson says he and his wife requested to vote absentee, and last week counties started mailing November election absentee ballots. Solson says a Gwinnett County election worker told him his ballot should arrive within the week. But when it still had not shown up this morning, he followed up. What is the delay? Is it the Postal Service or what? She says, no, it's being routed through a third party, and that was New York. It turns out that's true, but it's a little complicated as to why. In Gwinnett County, the Voting Rights Act requires English and Spanish ballots because more than 5% of Gwinnett's voters speak Spanish. In 2019, the Democratic Party of Georgia filed this lawsuit over the county's absentee ballot envelope. The oath voters sign is printed in two languages in six and a half point font. The Democratic Party claimed it was cramped, hard to read, and in the 2018 general election, Gwinnett rejected more absentee ballots for missing or mismatched signatures than any other county. Court filings show a settlement led to this new envelope. The state confirms Gwinnett is printing ballot materials out of state, creating a unique situation. Gwinnett County made a decision to go with an outside firm in New York to fill these ballots. And I know that we've checked with them and their process is moving forward right now. Gabriel Sterling with the Secretary of State's office says the county level decision to print in New York appears to be a source of any potential Gwinnett County ballot delays. There may be some potential delays in Gwinnett, it appears, but we're still investigating to find out where that stands. For voters statewide who have requested an absentee ballot, the state is now using a new service called Ballot Tracks to help you monitor it. The service from a company in Denver gives absentee voters who sign up, email, text, or phone updates as their ballot is printed, mailed, received, and counted. It also contacts you if there's an issue in counting your ballot. It will give you the email and the phone number of your particular county office to call and find out how to cure that absentee ballot so that your vote will count in November. And we have more information on ballot tracks and a link to sign up if you are voting absentee inside this story on 11alive.com. We received a response from Quinnette County's election board explaining why they had to choose this vendor. You can read that on 11alive.com. A new and exciting financial lifeline for struggling small businesses on Atlanta's West End is now moving online. Bill Liss has been following the plight of small business since COVID-19 hit with a vengeance in early March. He has a look at the impact of the new initiative. For West End small business, COVID-19 has dealt a devastating blow. The West End Merchants Association reports more than 40% of the businesses have closed their doors, many permanently. Many of those surviving are doing it day by day. You have a good one too, appreciate you here. Among them, McDowell Cleaners on Cascade Road, which has been in business 60 years. Starting around March, our business dropped about 60%, and we tried to keep everyone here working, um, and it was a really, really stretched spin. We kept the doors open throughout the pandemic. We didn't cut our service any, but it's been difficult 
with the lack of business. Now Invest Atlanta is stepping in with a critically timed low interest multi-million dollar loan program. Over a million dollars will be available in terms of loans. If you include all of our other programs, so specifically to the CARES Act, which is available to the entire city, yes, the number will increase to upwards of two million. For Reg Clerk and his McDowell cleaners, loans that will be up to $50,000 can keep him in business. It will give us some working capital, some money to make improvements for our business, like a new delivery vehicle or a new piece of equipment that we need badly. Unity National Bank Director George Andrews says this loan program could save the West End. This money is much needed, so businesses can actually provide. This money will be used to give what I call innovative diversity to their products. West End small business owners can go to Invest Atlanta's website and apply right now. For a link, look for the story in the As Seen on TV section of the 11 Alive app. It is a battle Georgia families have been fighting for five years how to legally access. Uh, legally access medical marijuana. In 2015, state lawmakers approved the use of low-dose THC for certain medical conditions. Many patients say it is life-changing, helping stop constant pain and easing seizures and other symptoms. But right now, there is no legal way to buy medical marijuana, forcing those who depend on the drug to either leave the state or find underground methods of acquiring it. It is an issue the new executive director of the state's Medical Marijuana Commission is focused on solving. In the past, where they've been waiting for years and years, that countdown timer is now going in reverse. There are fewer and fewer days ahead that they're going to have to wait to get access to that medicine. The Medical Marijuana Commission meets tomorrow at 10 a.m. to discuss the next steps in the process. It's open to the public if you would like to attend virtually. You know, just a week ago, we were tracking several tropical systems in the Atlantic, and now it's just died out. Things are so quiet as high pressures control over the Atlantic, and that's going to suppress any development at least the next five days. So that's good news because we're still having to dry out from beta that brought in that rain last night and throughout much of today. So coming up, how things are shaping up for your weekend and what type of rain could we expect to see next week? Also coming up, time for an early look at some high school football highlights around Metro Atlanta, including our Game of the Week next in sports. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. 
Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. The nation's capital pausing for the third day to honor the Supreme Court's longest serving female justice. It is with profound sorrow and deep sympathy to the Ginsburg family that I have the high honor to welcome Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg to lie in state in the capital of the United States. She does so on the catafalque built for Abraham Lincoln. May she rest in peace. Just a few steps from where she made history, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, breaking the barriers again, becoming the first woman and first Jewish American to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. A private ceremony was held inside the Capitol for family and invited guests only. Next week, Justice Ginsburg will be buried at Arlington National Cemetery next to her husband in a private ceremony. President Trump expected to officially announce his nominee to fill the empty seat on the U.S. Supreme Court tomorrow. Two NBC News sources confirmed that he has decided to select federal appeals court judge Amy Coney Barrett. She is a Notre Dame law professor and a former clerk for the late Justice Antonin Scalia. There are a lot of political junkies watching Georgia this fall as polls show tight races up and down the ballots. I talked with NBC's Chuck Todd about the president's visit and an eye-opening Senate ad. President Trump in Atlanta today and Vice President Pence will be here on Wednesday. Signs the campaign is taking Georgia very seriously. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, we continue to see polls showing a tight race here between the president and Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Is the Trump campaign now greatly concerned about Georgia? Where does that stand on the panic meter as far as looking at the polling from the state? They now treat Georgia the same way they treat Florida and North Carolina, uh, less than, you know, not like how they, quote, treat Ohio. Um, no, they see Georgia as, um, as more of a core battleground state now, and so do the Democrats. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I talked to quite a few pollsters and strategists over the last three or four months who were, three or four months ago, were convinced that eh, Georgia won't be there in the fall. Eh, it'll end up, the Republicans will slightly pull away. Yeah, look, yes, the Trump campaign takes it that seriously. And I'll tell you what I what do you hear from both of them. They'll say it's the Atlanta suburbs. Yeah. They just keep getting bigger and more diverse, and that has made them more competitive for the Democrats. So on this subject, we've got two Senate races here on the ballot as well. Now, Senator Kelly Leffler released an ad this week that is included that she is more conservative than Attila the Hun. That's trying to play to that base to try to make sure that Doug Collins doesn't take anything away from her. The latest right. Monmouth poll showed it very close, like uh, maybe a, a percentage point or two separating them as, as far as the Republicans go. Right. You know, that ad struck me, Jeff, and I'm very curious if, you, if, if, you, if you've gotten wind of this. That ad struck me as an ad of somebody who thinks they're going to end up in a runoff with a fellow Republican. Because that ad, if she ends up running against Reverend Warnock, I, I just don't see how that ad plays with, with any swing voter. Um, and, and a runoff. And so it, that was the one question I had. It's sort of like, look, we know that the ad maker on this behind the same ad that the Brian Kemp pickup truck with the gun, all that stuff, and, and it's designed to sort of 
grab your attention, shake you by the collar and say, hey, look at me, right? So we know what the, the, the design of the ad is, but I also am wondering, is that the, do they really think that this is gonna end up being Collins and Loeffler? And, and it just seems like a, a pretty risky strategy but we'll see. I, I found it to be a highly risky ad. Meet the press air Sunday morning at 10 here on 11 Alive. Chuck, thanks. Appreciate it. Well, after a couple of cloudy, gray, and rather rainy days, we're going to see a little sunshine return this weekend and some warmer temperatures. So today, we were in the 70s all day. I mean, last night, we never got down below 70. We were 70 for a low, and then we made it into the mid-70s this afternoon. So temperatures are going to be warming up as we head into the next few days. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at how things are going to shape up temperature-wise tomorrow. You can see we're going to have those temperatures getting down into the mid 60s or so overnight in most of our neighborhoods. We should be around 65 in Rome, 66 in Canton, 62 in Clayton and in Dalton. So pretty mild overnight uh, with the fog and the low clouds kind of insulating us in a bit. And then as we head into the afternoon, we should have temperatures getting into the low 80s in Atlanta. We'll be in the upper 70s across much of North Georgia. So warming up a few degrees. And then on Sunday in the mid 60s and then warming up into the low to mid 80s. So it is going to be a warm one on Sunday. Uh, so this weekend, definitely seeing a big temperature rebound. So we'll start to warm up after that fog dissipates in the morning. We'll have very slow clearing. I know you'll get up in the morning and you think, darn it, I thought it was supposed to be nice today. It will be by the afternoon, but the morning may look a little gray. And then we'll be mostly dry for the weekend. We do have a 20% chance of some showers on our Sunday. So the next 12 hours, we're going to continue to see those clouds thicken up here as we head into the overnight hours, temperatures getting down into the mid 60s. So a nine on your on that scale of 1 to 11, with 11 being a perfect day on our Saturday afternoon. It'll be a 9 with the cloud cover to start and the fog. But by the afternoon, I think things will be looking pretty dandy out there. And then during the day, we'll end up seeing a little bit of sunshine peeking in through those clouds and temperatures getting up around 80 degrees during the afternoon. So in comes the fog overnight. There may be a little bit of stubborn drizzle that just doesn't want to leave. But I think once we get to lunchtime, things will be looking much better. And by the afternoon, we'll see some breaks in the clouds and some sunshine. And then on our Sunday, we started out dry and we'll see some sunshine to start. And then we'll end up seeing that rain move in during the afternoon and evening. Just a 20% chance of isolated shower activity on Sunday. And then on Monday, it's going, going up to 40% chance. And then 30% chance on Tuesday, although we may have to readjust this. This front is looking a little more impressive, so we may have to up that a bit. So anyway, Keep your umbrella with you Monday and Tuesday. You'll likely need it. And then you'll need a sweater by the end of the week in the morning because temperatures are going to be dropping. In fact, we have a nice warm weekend this weekend, mostly dry. Rain comes in Monday, Tuesday with the front. And then by Wednesday, we cleared out. It's going to be crisp and dry and beautiful. Blue skies, lots of sunshine, and temperatures getting down around 50 by the time we get to Friday morning. source for great high school football and highlights and all the best games. So while we look at images that would have made no sense before 2020, one thing always makes sense, starting with our friends from Born to Compete. So we get started with the rematch. Here we go. A rematch from last year's stunning upset when Clark Central defeated Buford. What would we see tonight? Would Buford fall victim again? Here's Dylan Whitkey in the pocket, throwing to a wide open Jake Pope for the touchdown. Buford the early lead. The Wolves dominating this one. Victor Venn, the Venn man, getting the handoff. Nice move. Watch him go down the sideline. Buford wins 47 to nothing. They pitch a shutout. Blessed Trinity finally getting settled in after a long delay to its season, taking on Kell. Blessed uh, Trinity's quarterback is Jake Neville, and he finds Brendan Hunt on a go route right there. Nice straight arm, perfect pass, 7-0 Titans. 
What a beautiful evening for football. Oh, yeah. Longhorns now. Here they are. The bad snap. And Corbin LaFrance is able to recover the football. He scrambles to throw to Cameron Ball. The TD for Kell. We're tired. We're tied. Then Blessed Trinity unleashed Justice Haynes. And look at him break through. 45 yard touchdown. Blessed Trinity wins 54 to 32. First ever meeting between Rome and Collins Hill. Collins Hill's quarterback is Sam Horn. And Horn looking for Spencer Anderson, who runs it in for the touchdown. Collins Hill is first on the board in this tilt, in this contest, in this fray, in this game. Rome answers back. Caleb Edwards. Now he is connecting with Martel Height in the end zone to tie things up at seven. Height going up top, but Collins Hill has a trick play up their sleeves. Horn throwing the lateral to Travis Hunter, who then back to Sean Norris for a touchdown. Collins Hill is your winner, 28 to 14. A preview of our Team 1-1 game of the week. Mill Creek taking on a very talented Brookwood team tonight. Opening quarter and the opening drive for the Hawks. It ends in this 53-yard field goal from Brock Pellegrino and Mill Creek, uh, Mill Creek is up three zip. Later in the quarter, a handoff to Caleb Downs. And he is right in the middle for six. Mill Creek now up 10 nothing. Two minutes left in the quarter. Broncos driving. New Georgia offered quarterback Dylan L Lonergan finding Denylon Morissette in the corner for the score, 10 to 7. Broncos then kicked a field goal to tie it up at 10. And then Brookwood is your winner, 24 13. Great finish. You'll see it on 11 Alive in just a couple of minutes. Final home series for the Braves. Ronald Acuna saved the best for the last. Look at this, 495 feet. The longest home run of the season. It is a new record at SunTrust Park. Great bat flip. Wow, unbelievable. The Braves would trail 2-1 in the eighth. Bases loaded. Ozuna getting one past the shortstop. Two runners score. An error later would let another one in. But the Red Sox rally in the ninth. Force extra innings. Currently lead 6-5. They are in the bottom of the 10th. That's it for sports. We'll take a break. Back right after this. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. clouds out there and we're expecting a bit of a foggy start in the morning and then we'll see some sunshine by the afternoon so a nine on the wasometer on that scale of one to eleven a nine pretty good day getting into the low 80s should be nice going apple picking up in the mountains tomorrow uh, 83 on sunday with just a 20 percent chance so a mostly dry weekend 40 percent chance of rain on monday could have some thunderstorms 30 percent chance on tuesday and then drier crisp fall like weather for the second half of the week have a good night We'll see you on Channel 11 in just a minute. You, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights.